we've just done the 90s so it's now time to go back to the 80s and the thing that sold me on today's movie is the fact that this genie kind of looks like he belongs in Disney's Gargoyles so genie Disney's Gargoyles. I am still wandering my way through the world of 80s and 90s horror and the way that I decide if I'm gonna watch something or not is I tend to see an image from the movie, read the description and think that sounds good we're giving that a try and that is exactly what happened when I found the outing slash the lamp from 1987. But if you don't know anything about the outing slash the lamp from 1987 let me quickly fill you in. The Outing from 1987 is a supernatural slasher horror. After a group of thieves decide to ransack the home of a strange old gypsy woman, murdering her in the process, they unwillingly free a vengeful genie named Jin, who has been held captive for centuries in an ancient oil lamp. Soon after, the lamp is acquired by a local museum, but as Alex Wallace, the daughter of the museum's curator, decides to sneak in a group of friends into the museum after hours to party, she doesn't realise that Jin is looking for a new keeper and that Alex is the perfect vessel to carry out this genie's diabolical plans. If you're new here, I go by Hordes, and if you're not new, welcome back! I talk about horror movies here on my channel on Mondays and Fridays, but as always when it comes to watching movies that I have never seen before, I am now going to go and watch The Outing slash The Lamp from 1987 off camera. So that way, if you too decide that you want to watch this supernatural slasher movie about a rogue genie, nothing will be spoiled for you because nobody wants to watch a movie you've just watched somebody else watch from start to finish because then you're going to know exactly what happens and i keep it spoiler free here on my channel you see this man he finds a magic lamp the break in at the beginning those thieves are about as subtle as these guys hey 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 let's start with the plot and i'll first say that there is a version of this movie out there that is an hour and 45 minutes long but the version that I watched here in the UK is only an hour and 28 minutes long. So there is 17 minutes worth of footage where I don't know what is actually included. The much shorter version, it does feel quite pacey and there's not a lot of dead air. So maybe that is what the difference is gonna be. I honestly, I don't know without knowing what those missing 17 minutes actually contained. Do I think that this is the strongest plot? No, but there is a plot here, which is my basic requirement for a slasher movie. Like, I want a story to go along with your kills. And thankfully, that is the outing slash the life. It's a really basic, simple plot, but there's still plot there. The plot is along the lines of Genie Lamp turns up in museum. Museum owner's daughter, in a fit of rage, accidentally rubs the lamp, makes a wish, and wears the matching bracelet because how you accidentally do that is a mystery to me and then the genie decides because she's made this wish that he's going to do exactly that and proceeds to try and kill absolutely everybody who is locked in the museum after dark simple straightforward you can't really ask for much more than that as a basic plot that's the bare minimum the characters are your generic like high school teenagers who are all friends with each other and have all been conveniently paired off and coupled off with each other because what a surprise and they're all kind of forgettable i'd say that they're there as like human meat for our genie to kill off they're, they're very just they're there because it's gonna boost the kill count now there is one character in this and i had to google his name because i couldn't tell whether people were saying he was called mike or whether he was called spike like he is vile. Uh, this guy is dreadful. Like, dreadful. And at one point, and I'm gonna mention this because it's, it's a spoiler and it's a thing that not many people will be happy to hear. At one point, this guy uses the Ensler with a hard R. Like, I say this every time that I come across slurs or problematic things in horror movies, that yes, I understand that it was a different time when this movie was made, but it doesn't mean that this is something that people are comfortable still hearing now and i'm gonna point it out every time because there are things that people will and won't tolerate and i would rather you know and then you make up your own mind going forward with it same with trigger warnings and it's another thing that i have to mention because there is an essay scene in this involving like mike spike i think he's called mike and luckily this scene ends pretty much as soon as it starts when our genie friend decides that he's gonna crush Mike Spike's best friend's head like a grape and 
All I can say is it's a shame that it is not Mike slash Spike's head that gets popped like a grape instead because that would have been so satisfying. I love that when the genie is released, he just fills the room with smoke and pyrotechnics. Like the boy has clearly got a thing for theatrical flair, but I can't say the same for his choice in sound effects because he needs something for his squeaky wheels while he plays violin as he hunts down people. I'm kind of kidding, but I'm kind of not because the sound they play when he is prowling and you see everything through his eyes, oh, it's not a pleasant sound. It's not, it really does like, like it sounds like somebody is playing a string instrument with a cheese grater. Say when, when. But it's a shame to say that you don't actually see the genie's final form in the version I watched till the hour and 17 minute mark. And that's an hour and 28 minute movie. And it is such a shame because he is really cool looking when he finally gets his reveal. There's a full team of special effects artists behind this entire creation and for him to get used for such a short amount of time feels a little bit like a waste. But I don't know if there is more of him in the 17 minute extended version because I haven't seen the extended 17 minute version to tell you. I did a little bit of research into the whole special effects behind this and I found out that when this movie came out the critics hated the special effects in this and I understand that the glowy green eye thing may not have aged too well but the actual animatronic if you saw this thing even now in a dark ride or in a theme park lit with the same green lighting nobody would have any issue with it and i'm going to say that he has actually aged quite well i have no complaints about the actual genie when you see the actual genie i wish though they had given you like a glimpse of claw or something at some point because it would have made that reveal just that little bit sweeter there's a lot of deaths in this movie and i was pleasantly surprised by this i was expecting like just a handful of it no no everybody's gonna die in this movie and that is great and most of them actually happen on camera there is lots of blood splatter there's multiple different uses of weapons and things but unfortunately you do not see the djinn actually or the genie do any of these things like using his own hands because of how they have been shot from a certain perspective i will try and describe this you will see, for example, somebody, say, pinned against a wall and there will be a weapon sticking out of them and you will not see who is attached to the other end of the weapon actually killing them. Like, that's how most of the deaths happened in this movie. It's splattery, it's a little bit violent, it's a little bit gory, but not over-the-top splattery and gory. I would say, though, if you've got a fear of stakes, this movie is not gonna help you with that fear of snakes and in fact may actually give you a fear of bathtubs to go along with your fear of snakes. In the end, I am actually gonna give the outing slash the lamp from 1987 a 2.5 out of five stars because there are some things in this that have not aged well, like at all. The slur, for example, the glowy green eyes aren't the best, but you know, they aren't horrible by today's standards or even by 80s standards. They aren't the worst that I've ever seen. But I don't think that the, the actual animatronic or the other special effects deserve the harsh criticism that they got when this movie was released because he is still solid. I just wish there was more of him. And I am hoping that somebody in my comment section can tell me in the 17 minutes that I don't know, do you see him more? I want more of the genie. He's the best thing in the entire movie. So there you have it. My initial thoughts and my review for my first time watching The Outing slash The Lamp from 1987. If you've also seen this movie, I would love to know what your thoughts and opinions are down in the comments section down below. Is this one you'd be interested in watching? If so, I will leave a link to justwatch.com in my description bar so you can find out where it is streaming in your country. And if I can find it on YouTube, like I sometimes do with 80s movies, I will also leave that linked in the description bar as well. If you would like to know every single horror movie that I watch though, not just the ones I talk about here on YouTube, you can also find me over on Instagram and Letterboxd at Hordes of Horror. And I'm trying to watch 150 horror movies throughout the entire year. And I am already in the 120s, so who knows what number I'm gonna end up with at this point. Or maybe even stick around and join the Horde here on YouTube by hitting that subscribe button. But I will be back on Monday with another recommendations list. And this time it's another themed list. And I started writing a list 
of subgenres and themes on my phone and it got a bit ridiculous. So who knows, it may even turn into a little mini series. So until next time, bye. Thank <laughs> you.